My name is David Harnish. I'm a doctoral student at the School of Teaching and Learning at ISU. I wanted to share some of the research I've been conducting on culturally responsive pedagogy. Um, the review I did was a uh, selective one, non-exhaustive, but nonetheless should show and reveal some of the themes and ideas that I have found through my research. So to begin, some of the foundational researchers. The background here that we have to understand is like who some of the key figures are. Gloria Ladson Billings, understandably, is going to be the key foundational figure we'll start with. She is the one who is credited with coming up with the term culturally relevant pedagogy based on her research and time um, specifically studying in the early 90s successful teachers of African-American students. Um, the term culturally relevant is like borrowed from and builds upon the culturally appropriate scholarship of both anthropologists and other educational researchers in the 80s and early 90s. But this approach then was one that was more holistic and provided a, a complete framework for thinking about teaching students who have long been overlooked or assumed to be incapable or facing too many barriers to really learn. Then in uh, the late 90s, early 2000s, Geneva Gay came up with the concept of culturally responsive pedagogy, and the field since then has continued to expand considerably. Um, a few scholars to note here, I, to be clear, I am not listing all of the main figures, but only some. Uh, Django Paris in 2012 coined the term culturally sustaining pedagogy, which he termed as a loving critique of culturally relevant and extension. Um, in one in which Ladson Billings joined in, in terms of calling for a remix, as she termed it, right? Culturally relevant pedagogy 2.0, an extension that shifted the focus or added on a new focus of sustaining culture. And then lastly, I'll highlight Goldie Muhammad's contribution of historically responsive literacy and historically responsive pedagogy. Again, there are other scholars I haven't included, but this will give at least a brief foundation. Now, Ladson Billings in her uh, article called Toward a, Cult a Culturally Relevant uh, Education um, called, described this type of teaching as just good teaching. And the question then that I want to begin to consider is, well, what are the effects of just good teaching? What does it really do? So before I begin looking uh, more closely at my research question and findings, I want to first set up what this is and discuss um, language briefly. Culturally relevant, culturally responsive, I'm going to treat them as the same. I understand that there are some differences between the two, but for the sake of this review, I have come up with what I would kind of deter, uh, I would describe as the, the circle here of like the Venn diagram, the inner circle of these two. While there are some things that are different, these are what they have in common. Culturally relevant and responsive pedagogy both call for teachers to build on students' cultural knowledge, ways of being and communicating, to avoid deficit-minded thinking, to affirm students' identities, and to not demean them, and then lastly, to help students to critically interpret and understand the world. This all indeed sounds like good teaching, right? And so my research question I wanted to answer is, what are the effects then? of this type of pedagogy on secondary students, specifically those who are students of color. And so in my research, one of the first things that emerged was that there were some clear academic effects. So I'll begin by looking at that strand of findings. In a 2020 um, book published by Sleater and Zavala, which was focusing on ethnic studies in particular, they looked at a, over a dozen uh, a dozen ethnic studies courses. I'm going to look here at 10 that fit my criteria of being sec both looking at secondary schools and primarily students of color. So in these 10 culturally responsive ethnic studies courses they reviewed, eight of them had positive academic impacts. One specific study I'll highlight came from Dean Penner in 2017. This was a, um, a study of ninth grade students in San Francisco who were automatically enrolled in an ethnic studies course if they qualified due to having a low GPA coming into high school. And compared to the control group here, the students who had a higher GPA coming in, those in the culturally responsive ethnic studies course had some pretty su su uh, substantial improvements academically, a 1.4 point GPA improvement across the year and a 21% better attendance rate. 
Another study from Lopez in 2016 of bilingual teachers of Latino students in Arizona found that those teachers' beliefs about Spanish instruction, funds of knowledge, and critical awareness were all positively correlated, positively related to students' reading outcomes with statistically significant results. Another study from Chirpus in 2021 studied impact on state test scores in language arts and history. This was a program referred to as the Fresh Prep Program Curriculum, and this was in New York City schools. And the test scores in these two areas were the statewide uh, end of year mandated exams. The students who were in this program, this additional like enrichment program, ended up scoring 10 points higher than their peers who were not in it on those two uh, scores, language arts and history. Those who were seniors also graduated at a significantly higher rate than those who were not in this program, lending some significant evidence here to the impact that culturally responsive pedagogy can have on students of color. The second theme that emerged overall then was the social effect. And so in particular, this was oftentimes defined or described as the effective domain. And this is also a logical other like second area to focus on, considering that much of the research in this field and much of the theory stresses the importance of helping students to feel like they belong and emphasizing that belonging and the social side of learning are incredibly important and that that will tie into academics, but more on that in a bit. So what were the social effects that were found? In a 2016 systematic review of culturally responsive pedagogy studies that looked at studies from the mid 90s to the early 2000s, Aronson and Laughter found that multiple studies revealed that students had greater motivation, more interest in the content, and an improved perception of their own capacity to learn when they were in a culturally responsive classroom. Jones and Lee in 2019 studied a culturally responsive enrichment program for black girls. This program ran for a short period of time, less than one quarter of a year. And when the program was in progress, the results were positive. The girls in the program reported greater motivation to succeed in school when this was greater than those in the control group who were not in the program. However, six weeks after the program ended, they reported a steep decline in their motivation to succeed in school. And this would lend evidence to the importance here of culturally responsive enrichment, culturally responsive pedagogy being sustained and integrated holistically into the approach. One final study to look at came, comes from Dimmick 2012 here, which studied black students who were in a science class with a teacher who experimented with implementing more democratic and culturally responsive uh, pedagogy. The teacher and the students alike reported struggles with this attempt to switch to a more culturally responsive approach. This likely was because of the very abrupt and somewhat disconnected uh, attempt because this was not integrated or part of a holistic approach, students and teacher alike had a hard time navigating the, the changes in the dynamic in terms of communication and decision making, as well as how simply the learning process worked. And so, clearly both academic and social effects are correlated and they are interconnected. While my research didn't go into a lot of depth on precisely how connected they are in terms of the effect of one on the other, it does become clear that the two are related. More research on this, I think, would be of value. And if my research is to extend, which I plan on it, that is something I'll continue to look into further. Um, the importance and connection of these two aspects is also borne out in much of the theory and research. Um, both Howard and Valenzuela have stressed that these are key aspects uh, of the process, that when students feel like they belong, when their culture is valued, that then they're able to do better academically. And that is not rocket science, right? At the end of the day, we want students to feel like they belong. And when students feel comfortable and confident and that they're able to learn, of course they will of, uh, in, indeed do better, right? That is not a surprise. So. This just good teaching approach makes a lot of sense. And the research would seem to back up this, uh, this claim 
from um, Gloria Ladson Billings that this is indeed just good teaching. So here are my references um, and thank you for watching.